Welcome YouTube and welcome back to all my Buster Buddies. Hey, it's your big kahuna here, Brad, and this is Brad's Boredom Busters, your textile art channel. This is the channel where we have fun with fabric. Hey, and on this episode, we are going to be doing another ice dye. So I had a lot of great comments on the Starflower Mandala that we did an ice dye on. So it made me think, what other mandala folds can we ice dye? Yeah, so I thought the next shirt that we would try to ice dye is the Ronstar Mandala. And then in the next episode, we'll do the Lotus Flower Mandala. And then after that one, we'll try the 18 point Mandala. I've got that fold finally perfected. So I thought we'd do a liquid dye first. And then the next video after that, we'll try that as an ice dye. So, hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of those upcoming episodes. All right, so let's get on with this one. So the Ron Star Mandala. What you're gonna need for this shirt is a 100% cotton t-shirt, white, and you need to pre-wash that first and then soak it in soda ash water for at least 20 minutes then take it to your washer and put it on spin. Spin out most of that excess moisture so then it's ready to be folded. I've got all that done so we can head over to the work table and get it folded up. So we'll see you there. Okay, Buster Buddies, so here we are at the work table. So I said I've got my t-shirt already prepped, been soaked in soda ash for 20 minutes, then spun out in my washer so it's just slightly damp and ready to be folded. I already have it turned inside out. So the next step is to center the shirt and I'll show you that. And then we will get into folding up the Ronstar Mandala. All right, here we go. Oh, other things you'll need for this project, washable marker just to mark your centers. And then we're going to tie up the Ronstar with uh, sinew. So here we go, we've got the front of the shirt uh, centered and pulled forward. We've got all the wrinkles out, so it's a really a smooth surface. So now determine where you want the center of your mandala. I usually go about two thirds, one third from the bottom and the top. So about here looks good. And so now we just start our airplane fold. Okay, so there's our airplane fold. Just when you do it, make sure you get rid of the wrinkles that seem to occur inside your fold. So I've got mine all smoothed out. So now we start our tie off with the sinew. So I start mine with a slip knot. And tie off just the bottom end here. Okay, so now what makes the Ron Star fold different from the Lotus Flower? Because a Lotus Flower, you would simply just zigzag uh, tie as is. But with the Ron Star, to get that uh, look, you take 
and fold the shirt back over onto itself. And so you make this fold parallel to your first tie off of sinew. And let's cut off the excess here. And then what you do is you go diagonally over that fold, pull that down. Lock that in and then go around three or four times and tighten that up. Then you take your shirt and go back over again parallel to your sinew. And then you go diagonally again across that fold. There you go. Hold on to it and tighten that down and go around to that a couple more times. Tighten that down and then we just keep doing that, you know, folding back and forth, back and forth, paralleling your sinew lines until you get up as far as you want to go close to the collar. So I will tie off the rest of it. You can watch and enjoy the music. Okay, I think that's it because I'm getting right all close into the this is the uh, arm sleeve so that's kind of into the armpit so I think we're done so that's as many times as we can fold and tie that off okay so that's finished trim that I like to leave a good long end so I know where to unwrap it at then the rest of it, I'm going to open up. Then we can scrunch up the rest of it. I like to tuck in my sleeve just into itself. Let's get, get a rubber band around that area just so it would the fabric doesn't get back onto the mandala. So the rest just gets scrunched and you can tie it off with um, kite string or rubber bands. I just like rubber bands, they're easy. Okay, that's pretty much done. There we go. All right, so like I said, we're going to ice dye this one. So I promised in the title a Dollar Tree hack for ice dyeing. And let me show you that. I was there in the store the other day just looking for really something else. And I ran across this. Take a good look at that. This is garden edging. And like I say, it's at, here in the Portland area, we have Dollar Tree. I don't know if you can find the same sort of product in other areas of the country, if you have like Dollar General or the 99 cent store, but hopefully most 
dollar style stores carry this. Um, it is 3.9 inches tall by 9.8 feet long. So it's very thin, very flexible. So I saw it and I thought this would make ideal ice damming material. I know other tie dyers use silicone cake molds and I've never explored their cost, but this cost me a dollar and a quarter for, like I say, almost 10 feet. And so you can cut it, I'll paper clip it, and then I'll take some clothes pins and to shape it, you know, closer to the shirt when I put it in my curing tub, because I have a metal rack at the bottom that I can, you know, put clothes pins around this to hold its shape. But I thought this was really a nice solution for ice damming. It's pretty tall, so you can get a lot of ice in there. All right, so I will cut this to the size that I want and I'll bring my tub in and we'll start applying the dye next. Okay, Busters, so these are going to be the ice dye colors for our Ron Star. So we're doing bright yellow, coral pink, amethyst, and avocado. So this ought to look pretty cool. So let me get the tub ready and we will apply our dye. All right, Busters, we're all set up. Hey, I want you to just note a couple things here too. Um, you know, if you use a large tub like I do to ice dye with a metal shelf rack put in it, I applied some empty uh, dye jars underneath it to elevate it off the bottom of the tub. That way, if I'm doing multiple ice dyes, which means this could fill up with quite a bit of water because most times you're applying two applications of ice, uh, this helps keep the uh, project up out of the muck. I mean, most ice dyes are usually not, you know, to be muck dyes. I mean, if you choose to do so, then obviously you'd take all this out and just put the shirt straight to the bottom of the tub. But if you don't want to have it as a muck dye, then use some empty dye jars if you have them available. To elevate your rack in your curing tub. All right, let's start applying the dye. Because this fold makes these little nodules or knots very thick, I suggest applying quite a bit of dye on top and then I'm sure I'll have to apply at least two, maybe three applications of ice to help flood everything through so it, uh, yeah, so it, you know, shows up well on all the way through the uh, knots.
looking for the ice dam. And some clothespins, just to help hold it in its shape. Okay, there's the ice dam all set. Let me grab my ice and we'll get that applied now. Oh, almost forgot. Uh, now is actually a good time to apply a little extra soda ash. So let's get that on and then we do our ice. Yeah, you want to apply some dry soda ash that just helps keep the pH up on the project because you are going to be flushing it with quite a bit of water and so it would be easy to flush out all the soda ash that you you know soak the shirt in earlier so this just helped keep it so the shirt or the fabric will receive the dye properly all right so now let's get our application of ice on like I say, this will probably take two, maybe even three applications because once the ice is melted, I'll turn it over, check the bottom side, see if we've gotten penetration. I don't expect I will on the first uh, application of ice, so I will apply a second and then check it again. If we need a third, I will. Or if I think I need to just flip it over and apply more dye and then ice on the back side, that's also a possibility. But hopefully we can do it all on this one side and be successful. So I'll get right back to you. Let me grab my ice. All right, got my ice. Let's get it going. Okay, Busters, so ice dam is full. It's hanging in there pretty good. Anyway, so now I'll, like I say, wait for this to melt out. It's actually pretty hot here in the Portland area today. I think it's going to get up around 96, 98. So I may stick it outside for a while. Uh, but after, like I say, after I'm convinced that I've got enough saturation through the shirt, then it'll uh, sit for 24 hours after all the final ice application is melted. And then we will take it to the laundry sink and rinse it out, start with cold water to get out all the excess soda ash and then turn it up to hot to flush out all the excess dye that hasn't bonded with the shirt. Then it will go in the laundry with detergent and Curalon, which is a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And that will be washed in hot with a cold rinse. And then after that it will go in the dryer and we'll bring it in here for the reveal. So we will see you at the reveal. All right, take care. Okay, Busters. Hey, I think this answers the question. Can you ice dye a Ronstar? Oh yeah, baby, you sure can. This came out killer. I am so happy with how the colors laid out, just how everything worked. You know, when I had this tied up, I had to put the amethyst over uh, several of the knots just because normally when you liquid dye this, You'll dye each one individually, but because some end up on the bottom and some are on the top, uh, I couldn't do that. 
So I just had to lay the die out and, you know, see what it did. And boy, it did a great job. Yeah, it has some great color definition. I love the way the colors laid out around the Ronstar. This is beautiful. I am so happy with this. And what I did do, I did apply two applications of ice just to make sure it penetrated through all the thick folds. Yeah, this really worked out. And I want to show you something on the back. You never know what kind of surprises you might end up with. All right. I want you to take a look at this and see what you, or let me know in the comments what you see. Because what I see here, it looks like a, some sort of golden wine goblet. I see the stem here and the bowl for the goblet. Yeah, this <laughs> was really kind of a surprise when I uh, turned it over and looked at it when it came out of the dryer. It's like, hey, it has a goblet in the back. But yeah, this is just really beautiful. So the first Starflower Mandala Ice Dye, that one came out really great. This is our second one, the Ron Star. I'd say this is a winner. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Yep, I am very happy with it. So our next one will actually be the traditional Lotus Flower Mandala. That should die up really well as an ice dye too. So stay tuned for that one. Hey, and let me know in the comments anytime in the future. If I do a shirt and I forget to show you the back, let me know that I forgot to do it and I'll make a little short of that shirt showing the front and the back again so you don't miss it. Because yeah, sometimes you get pretty cool designs on the back when you're not expecting it. All right, well, hey, thanks for watching. Let's head over to the desk and we'll do a sign off. Peace out, baby. All right, Busters, that project came out really cool. Hey, I hope you learned something new on this project. Hey, if you really like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming projects. And hey, if you really want to help out my channel, go to my Buy Me A Coffee page and buy me a coffee. That really helps me out. Hey, all right. Thanks for watching. Love you all, folks. Peace out, baby, and go bust out some art.